Hey everyone, today we're talking about linear equations with parentheses, which means the distributive property. We'll do six problems together, which are the ones shown here on the screen. Before we get started, be sure to give this video a thumbs up for good luck. Let's go. When you see a linear equation with parentheses and numbers being added or subtracted inside that parentheses, you know that you have to use the distributive property. What that means is taking whatever number is directly outside of the parentheses and multiplying it by each number inside the parentheses. So for our step number one, let's first multiply two by the first number inside the parentheses, which is x, and we have two x. Then let's multiply the same two by the second number inside the parentheses, which is five. Two times five equals 10, so let's write that down. And that's it, that's distribution. On the right side, we'll just bring down the six. For step number two, we don't really have like terms on the same side to combine, so let's just move on to step number three, which is to isolate and solve for x like any other linear equation. We want to get all of our x's on one side and all of our numbers on the other. So in order to get rid of the plus 10, we need to do the opposite and minus 10. Just remember everything you do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do to the other. When we put it together, we'll get that 2x equals negative 4. To get rid of that 2 times x, let's do the opposite and divide by 2. Let's do it to both sides. We'll end up with x equals negative 2, which is our final answer. In order to check our answer, let's plug in negative 2 as x in the original equation. And just skipping all the work here, we'll finally get that 6 equals 6, which is true. So we know that x equals negative 2 is the right answer. Let's do another one, this time with negative values. Our first step is still going to be distribute to get rid of the parentheses. So we have to take that number directly outside of the parentheses, which is negative 10 and multiply it by the first number inside the parentheses, which is 9x. Negative 10 times 9x equals negative 90x. And we also have to multiply that same negative 10 by the second number, which is negative 7. So negative 10 times negative 7 equals positive 70. On the right side, we'll just bring down the 700. Again, with step number two, we don't really have terms to combine, so let's just go to step number three and isolate x. In order to get rid of the positive 70, let's do the opposite and subtract 70. Let's do it to both sides. And we'll get that negative 90x equals 700 minus 70, which is 630. In order to get rid of the negative 90x, let's do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So let's divide by negative 90 on both sides. And we'll get that x equals negative 7. In order to check our answer, let's plug in negative 7 for x in the original equation. We'll get that 700 equals 700, which is true, so we know we have the right answer. Here's another one with fractions. We'll actually just do the same exact thing. Number 1, let's distribute to get rid of the parentheses. Let's take the number that's directly outside of the parentheses, which is 4 fifths, and multiply it by the first number inside the parentheses, which is x. So we'll get 4 over 5x. Let's take that same number and multiply it by the second number inside the parentheses. 4 over 5 times 4 equals 16 over 5. Let's just bring down the 3. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out my video about linear equations with fractions. But since the denominator of both of the fractions are 5, let's just multiply both sides of the equation by 5. 
And this is kind of a pseudo distribution problem again. Um, distributing the five, we'll get that four X equals 16. And then on the right side, three times five equals 15. In order to get rid of the positive 16, let's subtract 16. We'll get that four X equals negative one. And in order to get rid of the four times X, let's do the opposite and divide by four. X equals negative one fourths. Plugging in to check our answer, we'll get that three equals three, which is true. So we know we have the right answer. For our fourth equation, we have some more expressions to work with, but we'll do the same process where anytime we see parentheses and expressions inside the parentheses, let's distribute to get rid of them. When we're distributing, we only have to look at the number directly outside of the parentheses. So even though we have 9x, we only need to multiply that 5 by the numbers inside the parentheses. Because of that, let's just bring down the 9x. Let's distribute. So 5 times 3 equals 15. And 5 times negative x equals negative 5x. Copy down the 11. And this time we actually use step number two because 9x and negative 5x both have x's, so we can combine the two values. 9x minus 5x equals 4x. Let's bring down the positive 15 and the 11. Now we're just left with any other linear equation, so let's do step number three and isolate x. In order to get rid of the plus 15, let's do the opposite and subtract 15. We'll get that 4x equals negative 4. In order to get rid of the 4 times x, let's do the opposite and divide by 4. We'll end up with our answer, which is x equals negative 1. Plugging in negative 1 as x in our original equation, we'll get that 11 equals 11, which is true, so we know we have the right answer. Oh my gosh, there are so many numbers now, but let's distribute to get rid of the parentheses. Taking the number directly outside of the parentheses, we'll multiply negative two by five, which is negative 10. Multiplying negative two by negative four X, we get positive eight X. We actually don't have like terms to combine on one side of the equation, so let's just continue on to step number three and isolate x. Just trying to get all of the x's on one side. I want to get rid of the negative 3x, so I'll do the opposite and add 3x. We'll get that negative 32 equals negative 10. 8x plus 3x equals 11x. Now let's get all of our numbers on the other side. To get rid of the negative 10, let's do the opposite and add 10. Negative 32 plus 10 equals negative 22. And let's just bring the 11x down. Dividing the equation by 11 on both sides, we'll get that negative 2 equals x. Plugging in negative two as x in our original equation, negative 26 equals negative 26. So we know we have the right answer. Let's circle negative two equals x. Feels good, right? All right, for the final one, I'm giving you guys a harder equation to solve. Just noticing right away that we have two expressions in parentheses, so we know we have to distribute to get rid of them. Let's just take it one step at a time. On the left side, let's just bring down the 5x because it's actually not directly outside of the parentheses. The negative two is. When we're distributing the left side, let's multiply negative two times x, which is negative two x. 
and negative 2x times positive 2 equals negative 4. Always remember to distribute with the negatives, don't forget them. Which sort of brings me to the right side, so there's a negative outside of the parentheses. This actually means we're distributing negative 1. Negative 1 times 2x equals negative 2x, and negative 1 times positive 15 equals negative 15. Just checking if we have like terms on either side of the equation, we can actually combine 5x minus 2x, which is 3x, and let's just copy down the rest of the equation. Now, let's move on to step number three and isolate x. I'm going to first try to get all of my x's on one side. In order to get rid of the negative 2x, I'm going to do the opposite and add 2x to both sides of the equation. We'll get that 5x minus 4 equals negative 15. In order to get all of the numbers on the other side, I need to get rid of the negative 4. Let's do that by doing the opposite of minus 4 and add 4. 5x equals negative 11. The 5s cancel, so our answer is actually x equals negative 11 over 5. When you arrive at an answer like this, you might start doubting yourself because a lot of times answers are whole numbers, and it's actually a lot of trouble plugging in a fraction, so a lot of times when I check an answer for a complicated equation, I won't plug it back in, I'll just do the entire problem again and see if I get the same answer. Good job guys, you made it through. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if this helped clear up linear equations with parentheses and the distributive property. Let me know what topics to cover next and see you in the next video.